When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom, kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, those who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger? Or a stranger needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Let the record show that it's already 1127. <laughs> oh, there was a man who died suddenly. He found himself at the gates of heaven, and he was greeted by St. Peter. And St. Peter looked very serious, and he said to the man, he said, before you meet with God, I, I thought I should tell you, we've been looking at your life, and we really haven't seen anything uh, that you did that was particularly good or particularly bad. Uh, we're not at all sure what we should do with you. So he said, is there anything you could tell us to help us with our decision? Well... The man thought, and he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, I, I was driving, and I saw this gang, this motorcycle gang. They were, they were harassing this woman, and I, I stopped my car. I got out, went to the trunk. I got, a, I got my tire on, and I walked over to, to the leader, and he was big and muscular and hairy, and, and, and he had tattoos all over his arms, and he had a ring in his nose, and I reached up. And I grabbed that ring and I pulled it right out of his nose. And I said to that man, I said, listen, if you bother that woman, you or your gang bother that woman, you'll all have to deal with me. Well, St. Peter was impressed. He said, well, really? He said, when did this happen? He said, about two minutes ago. <laughs> well, you know, there's a lot of those kind of Humorous but silly stories that describe getting into heaven or not getting in based on what we have done or what we failed to do. And the lesson that Greg just read from Matthew, uh, the Lord seems to describe a judgment scene very much like that. Those who had taken care of the needy went to heaven. Those who didn't, they went to the other place. Well, you know, that's really not a, what we've been taught, at least in the Lutheran church I grew up in and most Christian churches. So when we hear something that's contrary to what we believe or what we think we believe, uh, the thing to do is to test that out. 
And we do that by going into the scriptures. We go back. We, we look at the context in which those words were spoken, either by Christ or by whomever uh, they're recorded as being said. We, we want to know the context, the situation. The other thing we do is we look at the Bible as a whole. We look at other things that the Bible says about the very same uh, issue. And we're better able to understand that. Well, let's look at the context briefly. If we run back in the chapters 22, 23, 24, and including 25, we, we see Jesus covers a lot of territory in, in those chapters. In chapter 22, he, he, he warns the religious leaders back then, and, and he replies to us now, warns us against hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is saying one thing, believing one thing, and then doing the opposite. He warns that... Uh, that uh, he, he or tells them rather that he, he knows he's going, to, he's going to be crucified, but he also tells them that uh, he's going to return as judge. He's going to return uh, without any notice because the people are going to continue to grow in their sinfulness, and he's going to return and only the faithful will be saved. Let's look at, let's look at just a little piece out of Matthew 24. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. And a key word in there, the, the gospel, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached. What is this gospel? Somebody asks you, what is the gospel? You people talk about the gospel, the good news of Jesus. What, what is that? Well, you want to summarize the whole New Testament and part of the Old Testament together, what you come up with is John 3.16, right? Say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Well, friends, we're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we're saved through faith. It said he gave, God gave his son. Whoever believes will have eternal life. Now, St. Paul says it very clearly, too, over in Ephesians, the second chapter. He says, for it is by grace. Grace is God's love for us. That undeserved love that he has for us. Not that we deserve it. No, we've, we've disobeyed him, sinned against him. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It's the gift of God. Even the faith to believe is a gift from God. Not by works, not by what we do, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork. We're created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. All right. Now let's get into where we are in our in our sermon series, and our Bible study that parallels this, the last three sermons and in the sermon today, they're focused in on Mark, the 12th chapter, where one of the religious leaders asked Jesus, of all the commandments, what is the greatest one? And Jesus answered this way. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these. We're focusing in on strength. When we love, we do anything with strength, it means we put what we've got into it, especially when it says all your strength. Now, this is often called the great commandment. This morning, I'm going to suggest that we call it the great response. You see, our heart... Our heartfelt response to how valuable we are to God, how much he loves us, that he would send his very son into the world. His son would leave a perfect, innocent life and then give that life willingly on a cross for you, for me, dying for our sins so we could have forgiveness. We can have eternal life. Now, if we truly believe that, if we believe it, not just utter those words, but believe Believe who Jesus is, what he's done, and what he means to us now, a new life here on this earth, eternal life to come, then there ought to be some evidence in our lives. It should be, be kind of obvious. 
And we do that not to gain heaven because we know we're going to heaven. We're going to heaven. We should be living like we're going to heaven. Not out of fear, not, not a worry of judgment, but out of love and gratitude to our Lord. Now, did you notice something in, in the text? Those who had served the needy, they, they didn't know that when doing that, they were serving Jesus Christ. They didn't know that. They weren't doing that just to gain favor with Jesus. They did it because it was flowing. It was a response to what he has done in their lives. Now they have a, a new outlook on life. It's a life of, of gratitude, but it's also a life of obedience. In other words, following what, what God would have us do with this life that he gives us. And it's, it's in the commandments, it's in the scriptures, summarized by that great commandment. Okay. It's important. It's important to care for each other. And especially when we're in need one way or the other, whether it's, it's physical need or, or spiritual need. It's important. That's why Jesus Christ came into this world, to care for us, to heal us, heal us, save us from sin, and to give us that ultimate healing of eternal life. You recall when John the Baptist was in in prison. He knew he was facing a, a sure death at the hands of Herod. He knew that. But he wasn't absolutely sure that Jesus was the Savior, the Christ, the one promised in the scriptures by the prophets. So he sent his disciples to go to Jesus and ask him, are you the one? Are you the one we've been waiting for? Are you the Christ? And here's what Jesus said. He says, go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Well, these are God's priorities, are they not? Hmm? They're his priorities, his, they're his son's priorities because he had given his life, and they should be our priorities. So where do we start? Where do we start? What can you or I do to fulfill the great commandment? What you, can you and I do to, to help the needy of this world? There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. They say half the people in this world are in need. How do we address world hunger? How do we address the need for shelter and so forth? Each of us can do whatever God enables us to do with the time, the talent, and yeah, the treasure that he's given us. And when we do it, and we do it together, it adds up. It'll make a big difference. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something. I ask you to open your bulletin. You should have an insert in there. And it's entitled Worshipper. Okay, it's entitled Worshipper. Lori Hinman and a few other folks and I, we, we talked this past week about some of the immediate needs and opportunities to serve right here in Trinity. Not only right here, but we're, we're, we're currently reaching out. Now, these are not the only needs we have. There are many others, but these are ones I want to just talk about. It's something we can get our hands on now. That, and I... I want you to look at this as I go along, and you'll, you'll see a little blank behind each item or each uh, opportunity. I'm going to ask you point blank. If you can help us, check it off. Check one of them or several off. Check it off. When you're done at the bottom, there's a place for your name, phone number, and put it in the offering plate, part of your offering, big part of your offering today to God for all he's done in our lives. All right? Now, all right, let me make the, the caveat, of course. I know some of you are really serving here in many different ways. We appreciate all of that. Also know that many of you are dealing with problems, with some significant demands on your life due to family, to work, to your health, the health of a loved one. You're, some of you are caregivers, and believe me, I know what a caregiver has to do. So maybe you can't help, or maybe your help is very limited. That's not up to me. I'm not the judge by any means. I'm just bringing needs to you. All right. Let's, let's go through these. I'm going to try to go through them a little fast since somebody said something. But <laughs> Under outreach, 
We need volunteers to help deliver some clothing that was donated to us. Matter of fact, it's a lot of clothing. The story, real quickly, is that uh, a while back, uh, someone went to Ben Lander looking for help. The church helped them. And now this person works for a clothing company. And, and uh, as it turned out, that this clothing company had some surplus brand new stuff, T-shirts, sweatshirts, that kind of stuff. And uh, it wasn't selling. They had quite a bit of it, a couple pallet loads. And in the past, when they had that, they would either throw it away or just find somebody to give it to. Well, this person spoke up and said, would you give it to Trinity Lutheran Church? We have that. Lori and about 20 other people got together, spent most of a Saturday going through that clothes, sorting it out by size, so forth, made up 67 boxes of clothes, big boxes. Now we have that opportunity to share that blessing with other organizations. Now we're going to use some of it here. We're going to give it out through our sidewalk Sunday school or our food closet. We're going to send some up to the homeless shelter that we support. But we're also... We've contacted other churches, other organizations, local. We need people to take a box or two and deliver it for us. If you could help us out, check it off. We'll work at the schedule. We need volunteers to help with our food closet. Jesus said, I was hungry. You gave me something to eat. Let me share a little statistic with you from last year, 2018. Our food closet, and I'm not counting the special food uh, baskets that we give out at the holidays. We fed over 6,600 people, representing 1,850 families. Last month, January alone, we, we fed 638 people, representing 173 families. Most of what we provided was what you donate. Or some people give us some cash that goes to buy things that we... We, we are not given. A little bit of food comes in from other organizations that share it with us in the Maryland Food Bank. But most of it comes from you. Now we need people, some more people to help us distribute that. There's the times, the days that we're, our food, cl clock, the food closet is open. If you can help us, you come a little early, you stay a little later. Check it off. Our Easter egg and candy making, been going on for 60 years. It only takes four days out of the year to make all those eggs, but it takes a lot of people. Yesterday, the crosses were made for the eggs. Next weekend, on Saturday, Sunday, and possibly part of Monday, we're going to finish making the eggs and, and coating them. It all has to be done one right after the other. So what we're asking is some people to come and help out. Stay as long as you can. If you can't be there for a whole day, a few hours. Anything will help us to get it done. If you can help in that way, check it off. If you can help between Ash Wednesday and Easter selling those eggs, we need help doing that. And what do we do with all that money that comes in? We use it to help others. Like the VBS, Vacation Bible School. We don't charge. We don't charge members in the community. Our youth mission trip, SARC, the food closet, the high school scholarships. That money is used to further God's love and share it with others. All right. Of course, our worship service is on Saturday and Sunday. We need people. They're listed there. I'm not going to read them all to you. Well, they're up on the screen to you. Yeah. So, look, if you're here anyway, if you can come a little early and leave a little later in some cases, that will solve those issues, those needs. It's not something overly done. The Lenten meal help, um, that was covered in the little DVD. Frank Ostendorf was reading, uh, saying that. Outside, there is a sign-up sheet for the Lenten meals and what you can bring or what you can do to serve. If you can do that, please do that. Our heart ministry. Now, that's a new ministry, and we've combined under that ministry. Uh, we, we've combined the... Um, Stephen ministers, some 30 of our people that go out and visit the sick and the shut-in. We also have under that our cancer companions, those who will work with those who have cancer, help walk with them through that terrible disease. Now, one of the things that we also have under that is uh, the emergency medical help. 
every service, whether you know it or not, there's, uh, hopefully there's at least one, sometimes more than one person who is qualified to render medical assistance in the event of an emergency, either in the worship service or over in the school while we're here, over in a, a Sunday school. If you are qualified to do that, we could use some more help in that area. And the final thing is prayer partners. And we, <laughs> we, we always need people to partner with us in prayer. That's the first thing we do. And then we go about helping to be answers to those prayers. Now, you may be sitting there thinking, well, you know, a lot of that sounds like it's self-serving, huh? I mean, you know, we enjoy Lenten meals. We like the coffee socials, especially when they have those big donuts out there. And, and uh, I, I'm only talking from, you know, a, a distance, <laughs> about from here to here. <laughs> okay. Look, all of these things, the coffee socials, having parking lot attendants out there to help us get on and off the lots, the ushers, choir members, musicians, so many people give of themselves to help make our worship meaningful, uplifting, enjoyable. But these elements of service, they combine with everything else that we're doing. And when we put them all together, it enables us to grow in our faith, in Jesus Christ, and also to grow in our service to him and to our neighbor. When you take these, these few and add them to all the other things, and I know if I mention these, somebody's going to get their feelings hurt because I don't mention the ministry they're involved in. But when we combine it with our Sunday school, the youth ministry, the homeless shelter staffing, sidewalk Sunday school, as I mentioned, Stephen ministry, our adult mission trip that takes place every year. You talk about providing shelter to the homeless. These men and women go off to other states. Lately, it's been Mississippi. They go down and they rebuild homes that have been devastated due to the storms. That's real. That's tangible. And in the process of rebuilding homes, they help rebuild lives. You see, all of these team ministries, all of this comes together. Together as we are the body of Christ. We are the physical body of Christ here in this place. And you are a member of that body. Now, we all have different gifts. But together, when we combine our gifts with our strength, and we combine them in love for Jesus Christ, for another person, wonderful things are going to happen. We'll feed the hungry. We'll clothe the people that are in need. We'll visit the sick and the homebound. We'll provide shelter to those who need it. And the gospel is preached, is preached. We've been talking about the great commandment. As I said, it's also the great response because we have yet another great, and that's the great commission. Jesus Christ, when he ascended into heaven, gave us a great commission to go and share the gospel with others. Now, it is said, my friends, it's said that people need to see that we care before they'll care to know what we believe or who we believe in. A good example is our, our work in Guatemala, the village of El Jute. This June, we'll be wrapping up a three-year village transformation project there. So far, over 30 people have traveled to El Jute on mission trips, some of them multiple times. And let me just mention, they do that. They pay their own airfare and their own uh, travel expenses. Now, yeah, we collect money to support their effort, but that money is used to buy building materials and other things that they need once they get there. And they have done wonderful work. Through our mission teams, the village has been provided clean drinking water. There was a point where they... It, Clean drinking water meant going two miles to get it. We've provided them with school improvements, including running water, bathrooms, a playground, painting, concrete work, and other help to the village. Last month, a group of our people went, yeah, last month, January, they went down to El Jute. They went down and conducted a week-long Bible study because now... Now the people, the children as well as the adults, they're receptive. They're ready to hear about who we believe in. They're ready and they're receptive. 
So now we're also getting ready to, to complete the final and probably the most important phase of our project. Because the team is going down in June. They're going to build a church. And part of that church adjoining it is going to be a, a little parsonage for a pastor. Look, we've worked hard. Our people have worked hard. We've supported them in, in, in solving some of their most pressing needs, physical, bodily needs. Now's the time to help be instrumental in solving or bringing them to Jesus Christ. They're ready. They're receptive. It's going to take it's going to take prayer on everybody's part. And it's going, to take, it's going to take some help financially. We estimate it's going to cost about $31,500. We're about 10% there, so we've got a long ways to go. But brothers and sisters, let's finish, let's finish the task. Let's do it for Jesus and for those people in El Hute. My friends, whatever we do in love... To help our fellow person, we do it for Jesus Christ. Whenever, wherever we serve, Jesus Christ is worshipped. Amen? Amen? Amen. Please stand for a word of prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, your Son, who is King of kings, Lord of lords, came not to be served but to serve until he returns in all his glory, or until we go to meet him, may your Holy Spirit guide and empower us in our service to him and to our fellow person. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Thanks for watching. Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church can be found at 1100 Philadelphia Road in Joppa, Maryland, and at trinityjoppa.org. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. Be sure to check out the Facebook page for our Trinity Joppa YouTube channel, and please consider supporting our Patreon at patreon.com slash trinitydjoppa. God bless.